Hey there, today we have got something pretty special for you. The Acer Nitro 5, the first gaming laptop rocking a 7th gen Ryzen 7 processor all under 69,000. Now you might be wondering how on earth did they manage to pull that off? And more importantly, is this the best gaming laptop you can get under 70,000? When everything was like, it's gonna fall under my plan, I found out the Ryzen 7 in this laptop tells an entirely different story. So this series starts from 69000 and the variant we have has the RTX 3050 along with the Ryzen 7 7735Hs. But there is a twist to the processor that I will discuss later. For now, let's look at the specs. A 15.6 inch Full HD IPS panel with a 144Hz of refresh rate, 16 gigs of dual channel DDR5 RAM, 512GB of M.2 NVMe SSD, it's a Zen 4 1. And last but not least, it adds Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 6. Coming straight to the laptop, there are few things that make this interesting as a gaming laptop. For example, the strength of our laptop. Think of this section like the opening of the first chapter of a book. Why is it so important? Because it's the key on how long your laptop will last, even if you are as tough on it as I am. Testing the laptop's strength involves gently pressing on the lid to check the screen stability and pushing the keyboard area to test the durability. Similar to testing if it can withstand intense typing. Before diving into the test results, let's address some numbers. This model comes with some changes. It's slightly heavier, weighing an additional 300 grams. Additionally, it's more thick, measuring between 25.9 and 26.9 millimeters, placing it on the heavier end of the weigh balance. Comparing its design with the Nitro V15, this one feels a bit more inclined towards gamer aesthetic. While it's not as aggressive as the older Nitros, but has a few gaming elements, like the red colors on the exhaust. Simply put, Nitro 5 is winner when it comes to the build quality. Even though it's all plastic, it's tough and holds up very well in everyday use. This means it's durable and strong, perfect if you need a laptop that can handle a bit of rough treatment. The hinge on the Nitro 5 also feel fairly strong with a little bit of bounce when opening the lid. By the way, the lid can be opened with one hand quite easily, thanks to the overall strength I mentioned earlier. You still get a full 4-zone RGB backlight that you can customize with the NitroSense app. The Nitro 5 keyboard is still a pleasure to use. The travel distance and spacing seems good, and you get a large set of arrow keys. While it's not as good as the Lenovo keyboards, it's not terrible. As for the touchpad, its surface is pretty smooth but the clicking mechanism works well only in the 70% area of the bottom. The Nitro 5 comes with a cooling system designed for the effective heat management. It features two fans, one for the processor, another for the graphic card, along with two heat pipes shared between each of them. The third one is only for the processor. Moving up, there are heat spreaders cooling the VRMs and the graphic memory. And Acer also provides NitroSense software, which allows you to adjust the fan speed. You can choose from preset fan modes like Auto or Maximum or you can create your own custom settings. Additionally, NitroSense offers different system modes such as Quiet, Default and Productive depending on your needs. I know a lot of people watch my video but only a few percent of them subscribe to it. So do subscribe, it will really help for you as well as for me. The outside design is completed with the 720p back 10 and some useful ports. Starting at the back, there is a power port, a Gen 2 Type-C USB 3.2 port and an HDMI 2.1 port. On the right side, you only get two USB ports, one of which is a 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port and the other one is a 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A port. On the left side, you get a full Gigabyte Ethernet port, a Gen 1 USB 3.2 port and a headphone microphone jack. One of the Acer Nitro 5's more serious features is the display. If you are looking for a better display, you should choose from the Predator family. However, it does get better with the expensive options. Let's return to the Nitro 5, which has a 15.6 inch Full HD 144Hz IPS display with a brightness level of 277 nits. Not enough for outdoor usage, but we'll get the job done. We find a DCI-P3 coverage of 42.5% and a sRGB coverage of 59.7%. But you can find a better screen at this price point. Its number 7 doesn't really justify its performance. As you will see in the benchmarks, it can't even beat the i5-13420H and you should think about it multiple times before buying this laptop. This CPU has a total of 8 cores and 16 threads, plus it's a mid-level CPU. Like there is U, then HS, then H and finally HX. The 7735HS is the refresh of the 6800HS with 50MHz higher boost clock speed and a higher TDP of 54W. So, in the end, how does this all translate to the real-world performance? To find out this, we ran Cinebench R23. So, especially when it comes to the multi-core workloads, the Ryzen 7 7735HS don't necessarily produce a big improvement over the 6800H. Because they are basically the same CPUs. 
even the single core performance is same as the multi core. Of course, and the AMD systems can't compete with Intel's Raptor Lake, but it's a fact that the Ryzen CPUs do take lead in the terms of power efficiency. And as I go through the rest of the benchmarks, it's pretty clear that the new Nitro 5 brings about a 3 to 4 percent improvement over the previous generation. Turbo mode can definitely squeeze out a lot of performance, but it won't be enough to outperform the previous generation gap. But how does this all mean to you if you don't understand the benchmark scores? So, based on my experience with the performance, everything is top notch, the system is fast, and I haven't noticed any slowdowns during use. Whether it's everyday tasks like office work, web browsing and watching movies, or more demanding activities like Photoshop or content creation. What I mean by content creation here is the uses of the Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, the Vinci, and many more softwares that are used in the content creation works. If you want a budget gaming laptop with an AMD processor, go for the 6000 series. For better performance, look into getting a 13 gen Intel CPU, but if you already have a 6000 series AMD laptop, upgrading might not be worth it. Let's shift our gears to gaming performance. First, we ran RDR2 at 1080p ultra settings and DLSS set to quality and it gave me around an average FPS of 60, which is pretty good. Next up, we ran Forza Horizon 5, very high presets and it gave me around an average of 65 and finally we have GTA 5, which we tested at 1080p ultra and the FPS we got were really good, it was around 110 FPS. However, you should know that the RTX 3050 graphic card is not the strongest and it's a 4GB of video memory, which may not be sufficient for today's scheme. You might need to turn off ray tracing or lower quality settings, and DLSS will not help you much. So even if you pay 69,000 rupees, you only get a 3050 with average performance when you can get the V15 version of the Nitro for roughly the same price but with a better graphic card, the RTX 4050. So I don't understand why Acer released this laptop with only the CPU and cosmetic changes to the design, and everything else stays the same. And if I talk about the battery, it went from 100% to 20% in about 3 hours. All this time I was surfing the web, watching YouTube and then streaming a movie. I'm avoiding talking about the battery backup for gaming, because it's not a good idea to even consider gaming on battery, because it can put a lot of stress on your battery and can also affect your gaming performance. The sound from the speakers is not bad, but there are no bass, volume and other features that are often found in the top models of the laptop. These are the SSD speed and these are pretty good and fast according to the modern workloads. Moving on to thermals, the maximum temperature for the processor was recorded at 92.4 degrees Celsius. For the graphic card, it was around 84.1 degrees Celsius. By the way, the critical temperature for this processor, based on the specifications on the official site, is 95 degrees Celsius, and we are almost there. In principles, these figures can be considered quite acceptable for notebooks. We should also take this into the account that this was our stress test, where everything was loaded at 100% and the cooling fans were set to auto. In simple work tasks, the temperature will be much lower. In games, the temperatures are about the same. The noise level ranged from 55 to 59 decibels, but honestly, the Nitro 5 is pretty quiet. I've used much louder laptops before so I can compare. If you switch the fan profile to max in Nitro Sense, the noise increases a bit to about 60 to 65 decibels. It might not seem like a big difference on paper, but it's noticeably louder to the ear. It's best to adjust the settings individually to find the right balance between cooling and noise level. Should you invest in this device? Well, if you find a good deal, yes. But I would strongly advise you to search for the Nitro V15. Its Intel CPU is faster and the RTX 4050 provide a much better gaming experience. So that's it, peace out.